questions in. So while we are getting all of our um, platforms uh, synced up here, if you um, are in the middle of the three-day water fast with us, let me know. Uh, put it in the comments. Um, I also love knowing where you guys are from. We have just a worldwide audience, and it's so fun to see how we can all fast together, even though we live in different places. So this is my favorite thing about Fast Training Week is the impact that we can have on each other, supporting each other, and it really unifies uh, the world in general through the art of fasting, which is incredible. So if you're just joining me, um, this is my weekly Q&A. Um, I always put out a few days ahead of going live. I'll put out um, a little square on Instagram, on Facebook, um, in the community, in YouTube. And we ask for your questions. And um, then my team takes those questions. We lump them together so that we can get uh, the most frequently asked questions uh, to you guys first and any specific um, needs that you have, especially on a situation like this, where we're in the middle of a three-day water fast, I want to make sure you get those. Um, if Remember, if, if you need more customization with this, this is what I'm doing in the academy. So if it's not too late to join the Fat Burner Reset, uh, we're starting next Monday. Our first call is today, but it will be recorded. You can join us if you want more customization. I do Zoom calls where there's, uh, you can ask some deeper questions so that you get your fasting questions answered. Okay, with that, all the logistics out of the way, let's just start off with this. Um, how many of you guys are doing the three-day water fast with me? Um, and I want to ad address, there was a couple of questions in here about, well, what if I don't want to go three days? Yeah, no problem. Let's talk about that. But I'd love to know those of you that are doing the three day. Um, I'd love to see, you know, how you're doing. Just put it in the comments. Let me know how you're doing, what the experience has been. And as always, we're an incredible community. So let's cheer each other on. And I love knowing where you're from. I can see like here on, on my screen, uh, New Jersey, 68 hours in. That's awesome. Riverside, California, that's, I grew up in LA, so that was close to where I grew up. Canada, love it. Um, yeah, again, worldwide community here, so it's really fun to see where you guys are from. Arkansas, ooh, awesome. Okay, let's dive in to the three-day water fast for a second. Um, let me, I just wanna kind of give you an overview. I've been doing videos. If you haven't seen the videos on YouTube, I put them here on Instagram as well. Go watch those. The reason, I'll give you like a little behind the scenes um, uh, understanding of how I do my videos. So normally on a normal week that's not fast training week, I put out two videos. So I put out a video um, on Tuesday and I put out a video on Friday and I come live to you guys once a week. I've been doing that for years. What I saw about a year ago was during these fast training experiences, we take five days and I teach you a different fast. So I saw a need about six months ago to go through the six different timed fasts that I teach with you guys. So we started with intermittent fasting, we went to autophagy fasting, then we did 24, 36, 48, and this week, this month, we're doing the 72 hour fast. So um, the idea, if you'd been following me for a while, was to train your body over a six-month period to be able to dive into a three-day water fast. Now, some of you, if you've been doing them with me for six months, put it in the, put it in the comments. Um, and so it was a very uh, intentional teaching that I had on, the pu on a public platform. Now, what I noticed during these fast training weeks is, especially as we go into the longer fasts, it's you, you need information, right? Like if you're two days into a water fast and you're like, why am I doing it? Oh my God. Like I'm following this woman on, on YouTube and she told me not to drink, to eat for two days. Why am I doing this? You know, the, the monkey mind, like will start to say things to you. Um, so the science is so compelling that I really decided during these fast training weeks, I would bring you the research, I would bring you the application so that you could go and watch the information while you were in the middle of the fast so you could anchor yourself to why you're doing this. So if you haven't been watching the videos that I put out this week, 
go to YouTube, watch them. There are other, I mean, I, I have over 600 videos over there. Um, when you're in a difficult moment, which a three-day water fast can present, the most important thing is to anchor yourself to why you're doing it. And my scientific brain often has to understand the science behind it, has to understand logically why I'm doing it. And then the other part of this that's really helpful is having a personal why. Like, what are you hoping to get out of this three-day water fast? You know, if I used to say for years when I was uh, working with patients one-on-one -on -one, that if you gave me somebody to work with that ha had a scary diagnosis given to them, maybe a life-threatening diagnosis, I could get them to move into action a lot faster. I could get them better results than the person who said, oh, I just like to lose some weight. And you have to have a strong why as you go into these harder periods of fasting. Um, some of you guys can just fast like, like kings and queens and you do it really well. But if you're struggling, I want you to anchor back to why you're doing it. Are you doing it to prevent cancer? Are you doing it to prevent Alzheimer's? I mean, there's so many reasons to do it. Are you doing it to reset dopamine receptor sites? Why are you launching into this three-day fast this week? Um, and your why will be different than everybody else's. I'd love to know. In fact, if you want to put the why in the in the comments, I'd love to know your why. Um, just writing it out is really powerful. So put it in the comments why you're doing the three day fast, um, and then make sure you anchor yourself to it. Um, that really will help. The other th question that we got, and I, I will go through the, the bulk of the questions today, but a lot of people said, well, what if I don't want to do the three-day fast? Should I do something else? Now, the way those of you that have been doing fast training with me, a uh, week with me for a couple of years, the way I used to always do this week was I would teach a new fast, and then I would teach the water fast, the three-day water fast, because there were so many people that wanted to do a three-day water fast. So, um, so we always would have two options as our community's grown, as I've wanted to get more of the teachings and the science behind fasting into you guys, I've really kept it more focused on one fast. So it's really fun to do the three day water fast because so many of you are going to have like these aha moments. But I also, if you're like, mm, it's not for me, the three day water fast isn't for me, then I want to encourage you to just push your fast a little longer this week. So if you've gone 17 hours consistently, maybe because we've got so such a beautiful community doing these longer fasts this week, maybe you go 24 and that is awesome for you. Maybe you've been going 24 hours. And so this week you decided I'm going to go 36. I just encourage you during these fast training weeks to push it, that's the point, is to push the training a little bit more. Now, I want to remind you, again, that your body was programmed for adaptation. This is one of the biggest challenges we have right now in this modern world. There, We are not outside of the pandemic. Now, the pandemic has forced us all to adapt in very uncomfortable ways. But prior to 2020, you know, life was pretty comfortable for a lot of people. Um, again, I know we have people all over the world, but let's just look, you know, like here in America, I can sit on my couch and say I'm binge watching a Netflix series, not ever having to wait for the next one to come out. I can just keep watching the next episode, the next episode. I can make a decision from my couch that I'm hungry. I don't have to get off my couch. I can go to my phone and I can order DoorDash and have food directly sent to my front door. Now, as amazing as that is, it has destroyed our health. And it has destroyed our health because we're not forced to adapt. And our the human body thrives under what we call hormetic stressors. Hormetic stressors are small little times of discomfort. 
the pandemic would have been a beautiful hormetic stress if it had only been a few months long. We would have all had this greater appreciation for it. It's gone on too long and the stressors are, are have now moved into more detrimental stress. Same thing with fasting. When you push yourself into these periods of short discomfort, your body is healing in that discomfort. What I want you to realize is from a very young age, you have grown up, most of us have grown up it, with a healthcare system that will tell you that when you are in pain, when you are in discomfort, that that's a bad thing and you need to medicate it. You need to stop being in discomfort. What I love about hormetic stress, what I love about fasting is we can reframe that. We can say short periods of discomfort is where my body grows stronger. So if you're on the second day of this water fast, which often can be the hardest day, if you're on this day and you're like the monkey mind is talking at you, the first thing I want you to remind yourself is, A, there's a lot of limiting beliefs that are showing up in your self-talk today. So your relationship with food can dramatically change when you go into these three-day water fasts. So that monkey mind can be of benefit. So notice what it's saying. I have shared this story before, but it's really worth sharing again that I grew up in a, in a household where my mother taught me, an amazing mom, and she didn't know any different, that when you were having a bad day, sit down and eat some food. And I know a lot of you grew up in households like that. So when I grew, you know, was in my 20s, I, whenever I was feeling bad, I would turn to food. Now in my 40s, when I learned about fasting, that was a bit of a quandary for me because I was like, well, uh, when I don't feel good, I should eat, but I'm in the second day of a water fast. I don't feel good and I can't eat. What am I going to do? And I was able to bring that limiting belief to the surface and be able to go, okay, I want to change that. I want to repattern that. And ever since I started doing fasting, I actually now have a mindset when it gets uncomfortable I have a mindset of just, just sit tight. Ketones are coming. Your body knows what to do. Isn't it amazing that I can sit here in this place of discomfort and know that my body's healing? It's on the job. It's as, as simple. If your discomfort today is as simple as a fever, a fever is not comfortable for most people, but a fever is an important immune mechanism to burn out an infection. So if this is why in these longer fasts, I really want you guys to take your blood sugar numbers, mind your numbers, because the monkey mind can say, oh my gosh, I'm going to pass out. Oh my God, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And then you could go to your, to your keto mojo. You could go to your, um, to your uh, CGM and you could look at the blood sugar and see that it's in a normal level. Now, it, a lot of you guys have asked me about normal levels. You asked me, uh, I did a reel yesterday talking about um, uh, some tips and hacks that I use for uh, making fasting a little bit easier, these longer fasts. And somebody asked what the Australian conversion of, of blood sugar was. All of those questions are in the companion guide. So my team is watching right now. Just put, if you're, if you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube, just put companion guide in the comments, they'll send you a link. If you're on Instagram, you can go to my bio when this is over and it's the link is in there for the companion guide. It's a free companion guide and all those questions about blood sugar is there. But when the monkey mind shows up, what I want you to know is that it's an opportunity to do one of two things. See where your limiting beliefs are around food. Mine was, you know, if I don't eat, it's only going to get worse and I'm going to suffer even more. I've repatterned that into hang in there. The body knows what to do. And now I'm the ketones are coming. I literally like uh, regularly, I'm like, ketones are coming. Chill out, Mindy. Like ketones are coming. Ketones are coming. And pretty soon you can feel that metabolic switch. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, there are the ketones. Your hunger goes away. The mental clarity comes up. 
So that that has been helpful for me in repatterning my um, relationship with food. The second thing is know those numbers because if the monkey mind is telling you you're not safe, the numbers will let you know if you're safe or not safe. So really great way to go about this. Um, I also, when I go into a three-day water fast, um, I'm pretty sure I said this on the YouTube videos, but I really want to emphasize it even more. Um, one of the things that I will do is um, if I have anything I'm struggling with in life, um, that I just not getting answers for, I will just ask the question. You know, I have a morning routine built around meditation and breath work, and I'll just put a question out there saying, you know, what do I need to know right now to solve this problem? It's really interesting when you're in these longer fasts, how much inspiration you will get. This is why every religion uses fasting as a tool. Because as your body is not putting all the energy into digesting food, you will get more insight. You will have you know, better brain clarity. You will see things different. Now, the longer we go along this fast and you're, the more your ketones go up, the other thing that will happen that's really quite remarkable is as ketones go up, GABA goes up. And GABA is the neurotransmitter that calms us. So when I do like five day water fast by the fourth and fifth day, I don't, I don't really want to talk. I'm pretty much like my brain is slowing down. I don't want to talk as much. It's a beautiful tool, especially right now. We have so much information coming at us and we, a lot of it is the messaging is very fear-based as we go through this fast this week, you know, just pay attention to how calm the mind can be. And it's really coming from that increase in ketones and it's coming from GABA. So just, I, these are, it's a, such a cool moment. So those are my thoughts on the three-day water fast. Um, and if you decide to only go 48 hours, 36, and that's the longest you've gone, that's amazing. If you set out to go 72 and you only make it 48, there is no such thing as a failed fast. So please be kind to yourself as you move through this experience and also make sure that you are minding your numbers so you're always safe. Okay. Now, with all of that out of the way, I want to um, do a couple of things. We've had some incredible fasting wins. I, I, I think my new uh, strategy for happiness is literally reading your guys' comments. There, the, the reason I put so much content out there, the reason I show up for you is because I so deeply want you to believe in this miraculous body you were given. And I really wish you had been given an owner's manual at birth or your parents had been given an owner's manual at birth. If we had all been given owner's manual, we could prevent the chronic disease problem that the world is seeing right now. So uh, know that when you write your testimonials out, you tell me what, how fasting has changed your life. I flipping love it. And not only is it exciting for me to see you fall in love with you, is that people are coming to my platform, they're watching, they're like, uh, I don't know if I'm doing a three-day water fast, I'm going to watch this group of people. In fact, if you're watching the three-day water fast this, this week, put it in the notes um, or put it in the comments. It's okay. It's good. But what it, your testimonial inspires others. Right now, in this time in history, I will say this in every flipping video because I, it it's, makes so much sense to me that at the root of poor immune health is poor metabolic health. And it, I don't know what country you're from, but I can tell you that big food has now infiltrated across the world and the food we are eating is not normal food. We have vegetables and fruits that are being grown in, in mineral deficient soils. We have chemicals, cancer causing chemicals that are being allowed in our food. And so just literally walking into your supermarket every day is a dangerous experience. This is not okay. This needs to change. 
But getting big food to change is a long, slow, arduous process. But what we can do is take matters into our own health hands or take our health into our own hands and we can take whatever food style you're doing and we can compress it in a shorter eating window. The research is, is over and over and over again is proving when you take the Western diet of high fat and high sugar and you compress it into anywhere from a six hour to a 10 hour eating window, you become immune from the damage uh, that the Western diet will have on your metabolic markers. Now, these metabolic markers are things like your cholesterol. There are things like triglycerides. There are things like LDLs. There are waist circumference, fatty liver, um, uh, hemoglobin A1C, inflammatory markers like C CRP, blood pressure. You name it. You don't. If you don't want to change what you're eating, just eat it in a compressed window. Now you've improved metabolic health. And when you improve metabolic health, you improve immune health. And when you improve immune health, now we are moving forward in this crazy world of mysterious viruses and variants that keep emerging and will keep emerging. This is our way out. So I can't emphasize that enough. Now we have, and what I love across all our platforms is we have vegans, we have carnivore lovers. We have some people that are like, yeah, I'm not going to change my diet. I love going to McDonald's. Um, so just compress it. Whatever your style is, compress it into this eating window. So, and then if you want to clean up your diet, there's another level of metabolic health you'll create. And each time you take a step forward with metabolic health, you take a step forward with immune health. And this is the message that needs to get out right now. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if that's helpful. I will show up every week to you guys to keep getting that message across. And if, if this resonates with you, share it out into the world. Um, if your doctor is like, mm, I'm not really sure about fasting for you, I can't tell you how many doctors are going to my YouTube channel, looking at the science, send them there. I link the studies. Let's educate your doctor so they can be a partner with you. Okay. So with that all said, here are some of the great wins. And um, I just thank you to these people who shared sh their wins. The first is from J.V. Stevens. I love this one because this is a menopausal woman. My, my heart is with the menopausal women. Um, she's totally off HRT with no menopause symptoms. This is from just fasting alone. Um, she's down 32 pounds, healthy bathroom habits. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, more energy and clarity than she's ever expected. Super cool. And you guys, the mental health um, aspect of fasting is just profound. Okay, Denise Sita has lost 15 pounds in two months. I have never, I mean, I, I feel like I've tested every diet out there. 30 years ago, I was um, overweight. I was an emotional eater. I tried every diet. Nothing worked for my weight like fasting. If that's your experience, put it in the comments. Then Kathy S. participated in the July reset and loved the experience and knowledge. She lost 12 pounds but even better, she got comments on her skin and overall appearance from family and friends. Okay, this is a cool one too. You guys that are doing the three-day water fast, I want you to notice the changes in your skin. The longer you fast, the more color comes to your skin. I have seen it in myself. I've seen it in my patients. I've heard it from you guys, my Academy members. It's crazy what fasting can do, especially in the middle of a fast, to the glow and the health of your skin. And this is really what um, Kathy S. Was, is commenting on. The other thing I want to I want to point out is Kathy said she participated in the July reset. Let me just tell you how my um, platforms work. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, I'm here to give you information, free information. Um, sometimes it's logical and in order. Sometimes it's not. Uh, I watch you guys take the information and implement it. And if you need more guidance on how to do the metabolic shifting, this is what we do in my academy. 
So when I do these fat burner resets, like we're launching next week, the goal is to teach you, you remember that, that this one size fits all approach to health is ridiculous and it needs to stop. And it especially needs to stop for women because we all have different hormonal needs at different times. But if you need more, I got to figure out how to build a fasting lifestyle for me. That's what we're doing in these resets. That's what we're doing in my academy. The next reset, it's a 15-day experience, and it's all built around how to stabilize your blood sugar and burn more fat. I've got some new hacks in there for curbing hunger while you're going through a fasting experience. So if you want to join us for that, just put fat burner reset in your comments. Okay. And then the last cool win, and then I'm going to dive into the questions, is Deanna Thomas has lost, oh my gosh, lost over 120 pounds by changing my food habits and increasing fasting. Okay, Deanna, I just want to start off, and I hope you're listening. If you are, leave a comment. 120 pounds. Girl, I hope you look in the mirror and thank yourself every single day. Only you can do that for you. So I hope you love the body you're living in, and I hope you have such a sense of pride. 120 pounds is no easy feat, and kudos to you. Amazing. Um, she made one change at a time. Okay, so those of you that want it, Deanna's result. And she started by, started by breaking her Pepsi addiction amazing okay so here's 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 like the the possibility here deanna has made herself metabolically healthy and has made herself more immune strong which contributes to all of our health what if we could all get off our pepsi addictions what if we could get the soda pop out we could get get away from the crispy cream donuts and we could start to make ourselves metabolically healthy again and then with that, we make ourselves immune strong, which ultimately stops the spread of the virus. So Deanna, this is amazing. Um, it's now been over six years since her last Pepsi. I used to eat nonstop, had tons of health issues, eating tons of fried food, junk food, meat, dairy, fast food. And now six years later, changing her food and fasting, she has no health problems. Boom. I feel like I don't even need to say anymore. Deanna, you're my hero of the day. Amazing. So, and if you guys had great weight loss, put it in the comments. Okay, here are the questions that came in. So, coffee enemas, are they okay for, a, uh, for the water fast? Um, so, I love coffee enemas, and here is why I love coffee enemas. It is one of the best strategies for opening the liver up. And I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. Um, again, we go into this deeper in the academy. So your liver is your major detoxifying organ, and it will push toxins through a thin little straw called your common bile duct. When those toxins start to build, it will also send on toxins to the gallbladder so that the gallbladder is A, a storage for toxins, and B, creates bile so that you can push the toxins out more efficiently through this common bile duct. If you have had a high toxic load and you combine that with a lot of bad fats, what you are doing is that you are putting sludge through this common bile duct, this very thin straw. So those of you, your liver is the organ that is going to make ketones. So those of you that are having trouble getting into ketosis, those of you who are having trouble burning fat, um, your liver is a fat burning organ as well. You're going to want to open that common bile duct up. There's only two ways to do that. One is through the coffee enema experience. Um, again, companion guide, your go-to there. Second is through castor oil packs. Those are the two best ways to be able to open that common bile duct out so all of those toxins move through you. We don't want them stagnant. So the answer, the question was, is it okay to do during a water fast? It's not only okay, it's really, really smart. And a lot of you guys that aren't feeling good on this longer fast will really benefit from something like a coffee enema. So the answer is yes. Okay, second thing, if I can't make it, a full 72 hours, are there strategies to gain more benefits rather than just fully stopping? Like, should I stay under 20 grams of protein? 
another awesome question. And let me give you my first go-to. If it's 48 hours, 36 hours in, and you're just like, I can't do it. Um, a really good first step is to do one of two things. One, if you do meat, try a cup of bone broth. Sometimes the bone broth, it's just enough filling and um, it has glycine in it, which will help to repair the mucosal lining of your gut, which is great for things like a leaky gut. So try a cup of bone broth. Um, if you don't do, um, if you don't do bo uh, animal meat, try vegetable broth. It's not as rich and satisfying, so it may not have the same experience, but you could try broth first. Second thing you could do is you could do a fat. So you could try a half of avocado. You could do a little MCT oil in a scoop. Uh, you can do Andrea seed oils, that highly concentrated oil. Um, again, these are all linked in the companion guide for you. Um, but try some oil because oil, what, when you're fasting, your blood sugar is dipping. And what oil will do is it will help to stabilize that, which can help with the feelings that you, the bad feelings you might be getting. So I would start with one of those two things and see how that works for you. I can tell you that when I first started to learn to fast, um, I did bone broth fasting because I was like, I'm, I just need something to grip onto. Um, and I wasn't sure how long I could go. Now I find it's much easier just to do water or put element in my water. Um, it's my body just can make that switch over into fat burner. Once it's there, the hunger goes away. So that's if you if you can't make it, that would be my my either do broth or do a fat. Um, and if you decide to stay under 20 grams of protein, um, you'll keep yourself in autophagy, which is super smart. Whoever asked this question, they they they've been listening, which is great. Um, so if you wanted to do some meat, um, again, just make sure that between the bone broth and the meat, you're staying under 20 grams and you can stay in autophagy this whole week. Okay. Next question is, if element raises my blood sugar, is the fast still going to work? Okay, this has been interesting because we've had a lot of questions around um, element raising blood sugar. The first thing I want you to know is element was specifically designed for fasters. Um, the three minerals that we tend to lose the most when we fast are sodium, potassium, and magnesium. So thank you, Rob Wolf and his team, for creating this incredible product. I also think it plays a little trick on your mind and it kind of, oh, it tastes like something and it, and it, it ha can have that benefit. Now, the thing that will determine your blood sugar, how your blood sugar responds to a food or drink is your microbiome. Now, this is really fascinating because a lot of people haven't been taught that it's the health of your gut that monitors your blood sugar. So, for some of you, you could take Element and it will make your blood sugar go down. Some of you, it won't do anything for your blood sugar and others, it will make it go up. So the question was, what if it makes it go up? The, the, and for those of you who are trying to understand the measurement I'm using, what you do to test anything is you take a blood sugar reading, you do the, whatever the activity is, whether it's a drink or food, and then a half an hour later, you take another blood sugar reading. I want that first blood sugar reading and the second blood sugar reading should be very similar. Now, let me go even deeper in that understanding. You want, you do not want to see a, an increase of 10 points to your blood sugar. You don't want to see an increase of 10 points or more. I like that second reading to stay in a place of somewhere between a few points to no points to dropping, but I definitely, if it goes over a 10 point increase from that first reading, it's kicked you out of a fasted state. So to answer the question, I just want um, the person who asked it, if it went up two points, three points, four points, you're okay. If it went up nine points, okay, we're right about, you know, the second question I would ask you is, is it, are you feeling more hungry after you eat a drink element? That might be something you've got to look at. So um, if it's staying within that zero to 10 point range, you're golden. It's not pulling you out of a fasted state. You're getting those key minerals in that you need, especially in these longer fasts. Okay, so that's the element question. And um, I'm just curious, you guys put in the chat what your favorite element flavor is. 
personally, I'm uh, infatuated with the grapefruit and the watermelon. Um, it's like, I'm drinking it all the time. Like, I, I don't know what it is about those two flavors, but they're incredible. So I'm um, curious what your favorite flavor is. Okay, next question is about hair loss. Um, I have hair loss. Should I do the three-day water fast? Okay, let's talk about hair loss and what causes it. I would say the majority of time when you're fasting, if you are losing hair, it's because of a mineral deficiency. So we need minerals to grow hair. So that and to grow thick, luscious hair, right? Make our hair strong. So the first thing is if you have hair loss, you want to go into this longer fast, just up your minerals like a lot. So I'll give you a little example of what I do. I do a packet of Element every day, whether I'm fasting or not. Um, I do, um, I have a product I like called E-Lite by, by Body Bio. You can find it on Revelation Health. It's probably in the companion guide, knowing my team. Um, if not, just go to Revelation Health and put E-Lite in there. Um, and if you use my last name at Re Revelation Health, they give you a discount. So just, I wanna make sure you got that. Um, Elite, I put in my coffee in the morning. And then before I go to bed, I've been doing upgraded labs, magnesium, just I bought it in a liquid, doesn't taste great. You can get the capsule, it tastes a lot better. So I'm adding magnesium bef in before I go to bed. So I have become a mineral obsessed woman. Um, I've even found some sea salts with over 90 minerals in them. Like we, part of this is because of regenerative agriculture is not, hasn't taken over the world yet. We have more conventional farming. A lot of our foods is, are being grown, especially our fruits and vegetables are being grown in mineral deficient soils. And so then we come to fasting and that mineral deficiency reveals itself. And one of the ways it reveals itself is in your hair. Now, if you're doing all that, and I've heard some of you say, I'm doing all the mineral hacks and my hair has still got issues, then you got to look at what might be blocking the receptor site for that mineral. And this is where heavy metals comes in. So your body cannot get rid of heavy metals, lead, mercury, thallium, cesium, um, aluminum. These are minerals that the, the human body stores. It does not get rid of. Um, toxins like BPA, glyphosate, any pesticides, what happens in those situations is they come into your body, but then your body has a way of excreting them. It's just that you're getting them every day. So it's really toxic over, over, it has a bioaccumulation. With heavy metals, heavy metals get stored. They get, they sit in those receptor sites. So if you have metals in your mouth, you've probably got some heavy metals sitting in receptor sites. Um, breast implants are now showing to have a lot of heavy metals in them. Um, a lot of beauty products, uh, lipstick, if you're, if you haven't changed out your lipstick, lipstick has lead in it. Um, and so you're just, every time you put it on, it's getting into the mouth, into your mouth. So you may want to do a heavy metal test. We have some on my site. Um, if hair loss is a really severe thing. The other thing to look at with hair loss is it could be a thyroid issue. Now, I want to do at some point for you guys a whole series on thyroid and fasting. Put it in the comments if that would be helpful. Because just like there's a lot of misnomers around fasting for women, there's a lot of misnomers around people with thyroid problems. The trick with thyroid is you've really got to vary your fasts and food. And if you're fasting too much, yes, it can be hard on the thyroid, but you want to have a good balance of fasting and feasting. Again, we teach this in my academy if you want more detail on it. But I, it, it, if your hair is thinning, it's falling out, you're mega dosing on minerals, you've detoxed heavy metals, you know you have a thyroid problem, then we've got to help you figure out how to be more, have more variation in your food and your fasts. That will be uh, pivotal to make sure that your thyroid stays in good shape. We can do that better in my academy, but I want to give you sort of a bigger picture for those of you with thyroid. Okay, so that's hair loss. Um, the next question is, what if you aren't seeing your ketones rise much or even at all? Okay, this is a great question. So remember, metabolic switching. So what we're doing this week is we're, uh, we're like forcing the body over to the fat burner. And some of you who have been doing this with me for a while, your body's like, boop, yep, uh, you know, day in, I've got ketones, I'm grooving along, feeling good. So if you've been fasting with me for a while, you're probably learning this switch easily. 
if you're new to fasting, it's possible, think of the fat burner system, the only way, I, I really strongly believe this, that the only way to really get this fat burner system primed up is through fasting. Now, I want to tell you a little behind the scenes story. Oh, here we go. Okay. I must be back with you guys, hopefully. Let me know on YouTube and Facebook if I'm back. Um, I said Joe Rogan's name, and then all of a sudden, I went. everything went dark on my end. <laughs> so I don't know. Joe Rogan's that controversial. But let me tell you what I learned in listening to this. So Rhonda Patrick started doing um, the ketogenic diet. And she was talking about how she took carbs out and she started adding in all this fat. And um, so she was like saying how tough it was. Okay, I actually think the hardest way to get into this fat burning system is to do the ketogenic uh, diet alone without fasting. That's brutal. That is where you take carbs down, you up your good fats, and then you try to switch over. I think it's much easier to go to look at more of, uh, take your ketogenic diet, I'm, I'm a fan of keto, um, but compress it and lean into fasting longer. The more that you fast, the more you're gonna prime this fat burning system. Now, I wanna remind you what the question was because we lost a little, uh, little air time here. Um, the question was, this person struggling to get into ketosis. So what I want, I would say to that person is keep fasting, keep pushing your fasting, vary your fasts in and out, watch what you're eating, make sure you're not eating toxic oils, get off the refined carbohydrates, add more vegetables in. Um, and with time, you will master the fat burning energy system. It, it, for some of us, it takes a little bit longer, but push your fast a little bit more and you'll get there quicker. Anybody know Rhonda Patrick? Send this to her. Let her know if she just pushes her fasting a little bit more, it's going to make her ketogenic diet easier. Um, so that is if you're struggling to get into ketosis, start there. More variation, clean up your diet and eat uh, and um, make sure that you're fasting a little longer each week. Take one day a week and just push that fast. Now, if that's not working, then there's another reason for it. There's a toxic reason. And again, get in my academy so we can help you brainstorm this because there's something deeper if that's not happening for you. Okay, thank you for hanging in there with me that we didn't lose everybody. Um, okay, the, I have two more questions that people asked. One was about hacks for sleeping while you're fasting. Now, this is interesting, and I, and I want to highlight this because I think it's super important. Um, when you are fasting, you are healing. Your body is repairing. When you sleep, you are healing and repairing. So there's a lot of times, especially in these longer fasts, where you just don't need as much sleep. Um, I saw uh, my friend Thomas Daylauer put out a video a couple of days ago on his Instagram talking about how he's noticed as he's fasting more, he needs less sleep. 
I've noticed the same thing. Sleep is made for repair, but when you're fasting, you're repairing at the same time. So if you're noticing that you need less sleep, that could be a good thing. Second thing um, th that I would say is a good hack is, again, up your magnesium. I like Upgraded Labs Magnesium. Um, you can find it on Revelation Health. And again, use my last name so you get your discount. Um, and then the other thing would be to try some like a melatonin supplement. The two that I like are Drem and Sandman is another one. Um, again, go to my website. You can find that. These are both great uh, melatonin supplements. Okay. And then the last one is how much water should we be drinking? Okay. This is really interesting as well. So the, I, I'm surprised nobody's asked me this question, this go around. I usually get the question of, can you drink too much water? So um, it would be really hard to drink too much water. I mean, you'd have to drink a lot of water. And what most people you learn is the longer they fast, the less thirsty they are. In fact, I'll let you in on a little, a little secret next month. We're going to do a variation of dry fasting together. So I'm excited to share the studies on dry fasting are really cool, um, especially around brain health. So I'm going to teach you how to do it safely. So that's next month for fast training week. Um, but when you're in these longer water fasts, doing a, um, you know, drinking too much water, don't, you know, I wouldn't worry about that. Okay. Second thing on water is you always want water to be clean. This is again, like food. I wish I could just tell you that you're going to your faucet, you turn on the water and it's clean, but that's not the way the water systems work in this, at least here in America, maybe in other countries, you guys probably have cleaner water. So um, make sure you have clean water. Again, go to my website. I've got a bunch of resources for different ways uh, and different expenses to get clean water. And then the last thing I want to point out on hydration is just, and think about this for a moment, just because you drink water doesn't mean you're hydrated. That's, that's a mind bending one. I had to hear that for a couple of times before I really grasped it. So what hydrates you are minerals. We're back at minerals. This is why I am so in love with Element. I put a packet of it in my water every day so that it hydrates me. You need those minerals to drive the water into the cells. They won't just naturally go there. And the longer we live, the more cellular inflammation we have. So we need to add those minerals into our water to really magnify hydration. And then you can get really tricky with water, like um, hydrogen water, really cool for gut repair. Uh, go listen to the podcast interview I did with Dr. Paul Baratelio. That's amazing, uh, talking about the power of hydrogen water on gut issues. Um, so water, unfortunately, is not as simple. It should be, but it's not as simple as just not, not uh, just drinking the faucet water. So those are my thoughts on hydration. Okay. Last thing, and then I'm going to move on. I've got um, our first uh, fat burner reset call. If you're joining me in the fat burner reset, put it in the comments. Um, I'd love to get to know you guys. Uh, if you haven't joined the fat burner reset, it's not too late. The call will be recorded. Uh, the program, the 15 day experience starts on Monday. I'd love to inspire you to be a, um, the best version of you that you possibly can. I love what we do together in these resets. So join us over there. But here is the last thing I'm going to say to you. Um, those of you, I want to speak directly to those of you that are in this three day water fast. The first I just want you to look in the mirror today and thank yourself for what you are doing. What I love about fasting amongst all the m a million things is it's a gift you give yourself, only you can do it. Nobody can ever talk you into a fast. You have to do it. So please honor yourself. There's too much, especially for women, the women listening, we do too much beating ourselves up up here. Stop it. Let's get off of that. And let's just, every day you are looking in the mirror, I want you to say thank you to your body and thank you to your mind for going through this process. Second thing, for those of you in the three-day water fast, distraction works really great. Go to sleep, watch TV, go out for a walk, just, just distract the mind. Know that you do not have to believe everything your mind tells you, okay? Just because your mind is saying it doesn't mean it's true. 
So be aware of those limiting beliefs that are, that are showing up. And then the last thing is always be safe. So please mind your numbers, know your numbers. If you have a very serious condition, please involve your doctor in it. Um, so far, we've built this community off of love and service and information and everybody's been safe. And I'd like to keep the community that way. Um, if you see somebody's testimonial on any of my videos, please cheer them on. If you're struggling with fasting and you have some insight to cheer somebody on, kind words, the world, the world needs kind words right now. So the more we can cheer each other through this process, um, everybody wins. In fact, this is one last thought, and then I truly am going to leave you all. When you say a kind word to somebody else, they get oxytocin from, from receiving it, and you get oxytocin. So you're getting the physical benefits of gratitude and kindness to others. That, outside of metabolic health, that's what the world needs. So, okay, those of you in the fat burner, I'll see you here in a moment. And the rest of you, keep on going. You're doing great. Um, excited to see where you all end up at the end of this week. As always, hope that helps.